This is the eMachines M6805, a laptop from early 2004. And today we're going to be doing an OS install on it. This is a pretty interesting laptop that I've been meaning to do a video on for some time now. However, I've never really gotten around to doing a proper OS install on this thing. This laptop has an AMD Mobile Athlon 64 processor with 768 megs of RAM and a Mobility Radeon 9600, so it's pretty decent for its time. That doesn't mean this laptop is perfect though, it's got several problems with it and things that need work, but the biggest thing we're going to be taking care of today is its need of an operating system. Because, well, let's just go over to the workbench and take a look. This thing would have originally shipped with Windows XP Home Edition brand new, and this thing still had its original install on the hard drive. However, it was incredibly crapped up. It had a ton of stuff just left behind. And while I tried cleaning it up, it just really wasn't worth trying to deal with. So as you can see, one day I got really bored and decided to throw Windows Vista on this computer just to see how it would do. While admittingly, it looks pretty nice on this thing's display, its lack of RAM means that, as expected, Vista on this thing absolutely sucks. Which, to be fair, is not surprising. This is exactly what I expected with this low RAM. You're probably wondering, I'll just upgrade the RAM, and I can't, because this computer doesn't take more than 768 megs. Obviously, because this thing is running out of RAM all the time, in turn, the hard drive is just being used all the time since it's constantly having to use the page file. Which means trying to do pretty much anything on this computer is a bit of a struggle. As mentioned earlier, this thing had a ton of software and even some games that were left behind. However, they all need CDs and so they're not really worth preserving. This thing also had a ton of files left over that I tried to get rid of. However, there's things all over this hard drive, so it really seems best to just finally give this thing a proper clean install. Now the reason I didn't do this earlier is mostly because I prefer to do things factory if I can due to drivers more than anything, and this computer did not appear to have a recovery partition or any files on it that would have suggested it ever had one. And I checked online and I couldn't find a disk for this thing. so. It kind of sat on this old install for the longest time. However, it was so slow that I finally just said screw it and was going to do a clean install. However, right before I filmed this video, I realized that somebody uploaded a disk for an M6810. The M6810 is pretty much just a slightly updated newer version of the exact same laptop and it suggested that it would have worked on any M6800 laptop, so eMachines doesn't lock down their recovery disks anyway because they're too cheap for that, so I knew it would install on this computer. It was just a matter of how well the hardware would have supported it. So I decided that that's what I'm going to give a try on this thing. Thankfully, this disk was a DVD and not a bazillion different CDs, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Yeah, this install just needs to go away. <laughs> uh, can't even shut it down properly. Alright, let's get started. I said, let's get started. Ah, stupid thing. Won't go into the boot menu. Never fails having escape be the same key that both enters and exits the boot menu. Alright, let's get this show on the road. Okay, this CD will now start the eMachine system recovery menu. Press Q to quit. Well, we don't want to do that, so we'll let it run. Something, by the way, to note about this laptop is that it has a pretty interesting problem with its optical drive. For you see, it does work. However, it's very slow. Like, very slow. The footage that you're watching right now has been sped up to 5 
thousand percent and it's still slow it took so long that i had to just get up and go and do something else and when i came back nearly an hour later it still barely made any progress so in the interest of not waiting all night for this to finish i just decided i had enough this optical drive has got to come out of this computer for this video. I think it's a rebadged light on drive. I don't know. Either way, it's just garbage. I'm replacing it with an equally garbage drive, but one that I know won't take all night. You're probably wondering why I didn't put this drive in here to begin with, and that's because for some reason the bezel doesn't fit. So without it, it just kind of looks a bit stupid. But I'd rather have functionality rather than it looking pretty. Okay, let's start all that over again. You can see the speed difference between the old drive and the new drive in real time. It's impressive how awful that other drive is. I'm hoping maybe I can clean it and that will fix it because sheesh, it's not good. And it's not exactly like this optical drive is that fast either. So I think that speaks volumes to how really junk that other drive is. Oh cool, it's one of these PC Angel programs. This is the exact same program that HP and Gateway also use. Alright, so we can select an option below, click the next button. So our options are to install the master boot record or the non-destructive recovery. Not quite sure why these are hidden under advanced, but whatever I guess. I'm not even sure the non-destructive recovery would even work with Vista anyway. I don't know it would know what to do with that. We'll go ahead and do the full system recovery just to wipe out that hard drive. All files including data files, blah 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 blah, will be recovered. Nobody cares. So this program does indeed not appear to create a partition of any kind on the hard drive, which is a bit interesting. I mean, oh well, I guess, if anything, is just taking up more space. So it's just going to copy the entire contents of the CD right to the drive instead of making a partition, which is fair enough, I guess. I will say of all these PC Angel programs, I think the eMachines one is honestly the nicest looking just because of the blue theme. Anyways, this is going to take some time, so we'll let it run. If you're not interested in watching the rest of this, you can skip to the timestamp below.
Okay, recovery finished. You may now remove the DVD after the PC has restarted. Eh, 26 minutes isn't that bad. I'm now curious how long it truly would have taken with that original drive, but I don't think I could have really waited all night for that. Alright, so this machine has Windows XP Home Edition Service Pack 1, since it's still set Home Edition on the boot screen, so this thing's definitely going to be pretty out of date. On first glance, it appears to have also picked up the video card out of the box, which is nice. Those drivers appear to have carried over. Now, unlike that HP Elite Book, this did actually play sound. However, it was incredibly quiet, so it didn't really pick up on the mic. You're welcome. Thank you for purchasing this computer from eMachines featuring Microsoft Windows XP. Something I thought was a bit interesting is it only has a Windows EULA. There's no eMachines agreement or anything like that. Guess they couldn't have been bothered to even come up with one. Do you want to set up internet access now? I wasn't going to do this, but I think I have an idea of what this is, so we'll go out and do it. Yep, I knew it. Let's get on the internet. eMachines and America Online have teamed up to simplify the internet. Three months of America Online is included with your eMachines PC. I don't think I will be using this, but thanks for the offer. Alright, that wasn't too bad at all. Otherwise, the only other setup it had to do was another reboot. Thankfully, this one didn't have to spend another hour decompressing contents of the hard drive. It just all did everything in that one initial process, and that was the only bit of recovery it actually had to do. So after one last reboot, here we are at the desktop. And hey, look at that! The desktop is entirely clean. Nice! I love stuff like that. It also has that eMachines wallpaper, which they just put eMachines on the Windows XP Bliss wallpaper. Although in all fairness, I actually really like this wallpaper. It's kind of neat to be honest. The first thing I was curious about is if there were any driver differences from the other disc, and no there weren't. It appears to have picked up everything in the computer as expected, so that's pretty good to be honest for a disc from another machine. Want to keep your copy of Windows XP up to date? And after all that, this computer is only using about 5 gigs of the hard drive, which isn't that bad. As far as programs go, we have the obligatory Adobe Reader 6.0 that came on everything back in the day. This program called Big Fix, which appears to be that eMachine's proactive support program. I don't have an internet connection, so this won't work anyway, and, and spoiler alert, this program stopped working on these computers in 2009 some kind of USB card reader driver. Both CompuServe 7 and AOL 9, so so much for that free trial that was included, it just installed the whole program on the computer. It also has AOL Instant Messenger on it, as well as ICQ. That's a name I haven't heard of in a very long time. It also has Netscape 6.2 preloaded, which is a bit fun. What's not fun, is that it doesn't work for some reason. Nice. It also has Microsoft Works and Money from 2004, so presumably Microsoft Works 7. This software came on everything, it's not really that special. It also was playing music as soon as I opened it, so that can be quiet. And yeah, this is Microsoft Works 7. It also has an eMachines version of Power DVD 5, which is kind of funny to see that logo there as well as QuickTime Player 6.3, Real Player 8 Basic, which probably came from AOL, as well as Winamp, which I actually wasn't expecting to see at all on this, but to be honest, I kind of dig it. That's kind of a neat thing to come preloaded with an OEM machine, specifically Winamp 2.75. It also has the obligatory Norton Antivirus 2004, which I don't really need to say anything more about. 
A ton of Roxio programs because Easy CD and DVD Creator 6. Not that I'm going to be doing anything with that crappy optical drive. It also comes preloaded with the M6800 series user manual, which again implies that this media likely wouldn't have been any different from any of these M6800 PCs. Something else is kind of a fun quirk because I believe these were manufactured before Gateway purchased eMachines since throughout this entire computer I've yet to find one mention of Gateway anywhere. Which would make sense, this computer was manufactured in I believe April of 2004. Finally, this machine comes with a copy of Picture It Premium 9, presumably part of Works, which is a bit interesting to have. And a shortcut for MSN and Carta Plus, which doesn't work. So, yeah, honestly, not really a bad load of software. There's not a whole lot of offensive things other than Norton pre-installed, which is to be expected. In the start menu, there's also this eMachines features thing, which just takes you to a HTM file with a bunch of links that don't really work anymore. Finally, here's the system properties. This does say M6810, so I will go and change that. But that's the only indication I can find that this would have even been for a different computer. Otherwise, all the stuff still works the same. The next day, when I actually was awake, I did go ahead and update this computer to the latest service pack of Windows XP, and I ran some updates on it as well, since this computer was pretty out of date. Still, even after all that, the system resource usage on this thing is, as to be expected, way better than it used to be. But it's not really a fair comparison. You're putting up a crapped install of Vista against a pretty clean one of XP. Something I noted with this machine, by the way, is it didn't seem to want to connect to my Wi-Fi network, like, at all. It just kind of tried and then gave up. I was only able to get internet on this thing by using a USB adapter. This was since corrected by updating the driver, so maybe this media was meant for a different Wi-Fi card, though I don't see how that would have made a difference. Finally, for fun, I did a boot up test. Not that I really needed to. If I was thinking, I would have probably compared this against Vista, but it was so dang slow I just couldn't have really been bothered to. It took about 1 minute and 4 seconds for the computer to boot up and for the drive to stop seeking. So thankfully, aside from the optical drive, this was a fairly straightforward process. I'll definitely be making a full review on this computer, you can expect that... hopefully. 